the next speaker uh, works uh, at Xebia. He uh, really likes uh, architectural patterns and he actively uh, maintains an MVVM uh, framework. Um, so he's gonna talk about uh, one tool which, which, that's uh, gaining popularity today. It's Swift Package Manager and how you can or you cannot use it right now. So please welcome on stage GC Paston. Okay. Hi everyone. So I'm gonna show you how to use uh, Swift Package Manager. Uh, we only have uh, five minutes, so it's going to be uh, quick. So for those who don't know, uh, Swift Package Manager is a dependency manager. So it's like a co Cocoa Pods on Carthage. I think you already know them. So obviously it's going to be able to uh, find and download all your dependencies for your project. Once you've done that, uh, you can use it uh, either with Xcode or uh, by uh, compiling your, uh, your source, your dependencies. Uh, one great thing about SPM is that it's written in Swift and it's done by Apple. So if you have a latest version of Swift, uh, you already have SPM on your computer, so you don't need to use uh, Homebrew or RubyGem, it's already there. Um, you can use it on uh, Linux and Mac, and not so much for iOS right now, so you may find some ways to, to use it, uh, but uh, you won't have all the capabilities of uh, Cartage and CocoaBot. But uh, who cares, because who does iOS applications? Um, so I'm going to show you uh, some uh, examples uh, to, to use SPM. Uh, it's going to be for uh, Mac or Linux, obviously. Um, so one, one difference with uh, CocoaPods, Carthage, and SPM is that SPM is about um, dependencies and also about your app. So the first, the first use case is to create an app with uh, SPM. And to do that, you just declare a package.swift file at the root folder of your uh, project. So just like you would do uh, a pod file or a cat file. And uh, inside it, you, you, describe the, your, uh, you describe your application. So uh, basically, you have your application name. So for example, French kit and a dependency like Kitura. Kitura, and, uh, and that's it. Uh, after that, you just need to, up, to run Swift package fetch. So it's going to uh, resolve your dependencies and to download them. Uh, so here it's very like uh, CocoaPods and Carthage. And once you, uh, he's done that, he's going to put all your dependencies inside a folder called packages. Uh, one thing I forgot is that to make SPM understand you, you're doing an app, you will have to declare a main Swift file, main.swift file inside your, your source code. Um, okay, so you have your dependencies uh, downloaded on your computer, and now, oh, yeah, but you have one problem with SPM is that you don't have any log files. So, um, as you saw before, all dependencies are named with their, uh, their name and their version number. So, if you want to make sure every people, uh, every team member has the same version of dependencies, you will have to uh, version uh, packages folder. So uh, for now, no, no log file with all the versions written inside. And, uh, and you can only get source uh, file, source code from uh, SPM, because right now it doesn't handle uh, assets. Uh, but uh, who does uh, storyboards or zip, so it's not really useful anyway. <laughs> OK, so once you, you have your dependencies and you have versioned them, uh, you can uh, build your app, your app. So you have two possibilities. Uh, first one is to run Swift build, so it's going to build your dependencies as framework and your project. And so your project is ready, you can use it. Uh, the other option is to uh, use Xcode. And uh, for that, SPM has a, a, a a command line to generate an Xcode project. So you just run Swift package generate Xcode project, and you're going to have a full uh, Xcode project. Uh, so 
it's uh, like CocoaPod, but a little different. So CocoaPod just does a, a workspace with all your dependencies. Here, you have uh, your dependencies with uh, one target for each, and you have also your app with uh, your sources code and a target for your, your app. So uh, be careful, you're going to have both of them inside your generated uh, Xcode project. Uh, the other use case is obviously to create a package to share your code with uh, the community. And uh, to do that, uh, the process is quite the same when doing an app. So you're going to create a package.swift file again, but no main.swift file this time. You declare your package name and all its dependencies. So here, this is the, the package uh, file of Kitura with three dependencies on it. Uh, you're going to put all your source code into a folder named sources. This is convention for uh, for SPM, so it's the name of a folder it's going to, to use to get the source code. Up, and then you just need to tag and publish on GitHub, and uh, it's okay, everyone can use uh, your, your code. Okay, so just to summarize a little, uh, SPM right now is a a fair young uh, tool. Uh, it has a lot of possibilities. However, you can't lock your dependencies right now, but you can uh, version the folder, so it's not a big deal. Uh, the generated Xcode project can be modified. I mean, at least if you modify it, you will lose all your modification each time you run a generated Xcode project. So you can't configure it right now. And uh, obviously, the real use for SPM at the time being is for command line uh, tools on Mac and uh, Linux because uh, you won't be uh, totally able to use it with iOS. For example, Swift build won't work with, uh, with iOS. You can generate an Xcode project if you want to, but again, as you can't configure it without losing the modifications, it's going to be a little difficult. So for iOS, just check with uh, CocoaPods on, on Carthage. Thank you. Question time. Thanks. Thanks for this talk. Um, of course, we're going to talk about like the kind of competition there is between like the uh, kind of uh, regular approach with CocoaPods and Cartage uh, and this new way of doing things. Like, do you see do you see um, uh, SPM evolve in a way that will actually make those tools uh, obsolete, or do you think they'll stay? Uh, I don't know. I hope so. You Obviously, hope so. this is done by Apple, so it would be great to to be able to. To, to be compatible with iOS. Uh, once it's the case, uh, CocoaPods and Carthage would be less useful. Mm. But right now, there are, there are still uh, a place for them. Yeah, I, I think so also because I, I use assets uh, myself. <laughs> but do, do you think you, you were saying it's not available? The, obviously, that's um, kind of cannot be explained by the fact that it's cross platform and things like that. But do you think this is something that it will come at some point? Or I, I think so. Uh, I can't tell for the SPM yeah, for team, sure, but uh, I think so. It would be a strange, uh, an awkward decision to not to make uh, SPM compatible with iOS. Mm. Uh, if you had to pick one feature, oh, what would you add to uh, SPM? Mm, iOS compatibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's an easy one. one. I'm sorry, that's, that's a big one. And uh, can you use um, SPM for for scripting? Yeah, definitely. This is the most uh, useful case right now for uh, for SPM. Uh, there are already a lot of uh, packages available for command line tools. Yeah, command yeah. line tools. So and also for server on the server side, uh, I think for it's, the server, yeah. yeah, it's like almost uh, a must-have. Like you cannot create a server. I mean, I, th yeah. I think I hope I'm not saying any any uh, well, doing any mistakes. Yeah. But at the very beginning, I think uh, Kitua was incompatible with uh, SPM. Yeah. SPM wasn't compatible with Kutura and it was a, a nightmare to install. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, if we don't have that, then it's kind of hard to use packages. Um, so how does it feel uh, to be 
the only people that nobody can follow uh, <laughs> on Twitter at least. On Twitter, well, it doesn't bother me. Well, well, why why no. that? Huh? He, he doesn't have a Twitter account. Oh, you don't have a Twitter no, account? No, I don't have a Twitter account. Wow. And I have an Android phone. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, no, 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 no. So, no uh, long story short, uh, I, I really have to tell you that. Uh, the first time I met JC, actually, he was coding uh, on um, for iOS on a Hackintosh. So he didn't have a MacBook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's, that's great. That's, that's Thank you. Legal work. No, Huge no one is doing that. No one is doing that. <laughs> no, I mean, we are not supporting that. But okay, okay. Uh, I was a student. That's, uh, Don't that's do fine. that at home. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll uh, move on to the next speaker. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. you for being here.